Hi, Jack McElroy here with Will Kinney, and I'm in Thornton, Colorado, uh, and we're going to speak about how we both came to know that the King James Bible is the Word of God. The other thing we're going to speak about is some of the translational issues that really turn into doctrinal issues. Now, those are the things that everybody tells us that, oh, there are, there are no doctrinal issues at all when it comes to the Bible versions. But, as you will soon see, there are lots of uh, doctrinal issues. Now, I've many times have spoken about the, um, uh, the variant, variant readings, readings yeah. and I'm glad this man is here because <laughs> I can't remember anything. That's why my hair is gray and so forth. But, it's, uh, you know, I've always spoken about those um, uh, variant readings that are doctrinal issues. But uh, Will has some great examples of uh, translational changes and differences that certainly affect doctrine. Yeah. So, but first of all, let's, uh, let me turn to Will and ask, how is it that you came to believe uh, the King James Bible is indeed the Word of God? Well, I haven't always been a uh, King James Bible only believer. And what I mean by that is I believe that only the King James Bible is the inerrant and complete Word of God. I believe that God has acted in history in a special way to give us uh, an absolutely infallible Words of God Bible. And uh, the Gospel is found in any translation out there, any Bible version in any language, so I'm not denying that at all. I do not believe that you have to be King James only in order to be a Christian or be saved or to uh, know a lot about God. Uh, that's not the issue at all, but do we have an infallible Bible? And unfortunately, most Christians today do not believe that we do. And um, so when I, I became a Christian probably in my early 20s, and I was not King James only. And it was probably about 15 years ago that I was at a Bible study, and somebody uh, had Gail Ripplinger's book, uh, New Age Bible Versions, and they asked me about it. And I said, oh, all Bibles are basically the same thing, you know, and what's the difference? And uh, so he said, well, why don't you read this and, you know, and tell me what you think. So I started reading it, and the more I read it, because I had come out of a hippie background, Eastern religions, Hinduism and yoga, and, and I, I knew quite a bit about their thinking, and I started seeing some things, and boy, these Bibles are really different. I had no idea, you know, that they just said completely different things or texts were missing. And so I began to investigate and pray about it a lot, and... Uh, I started reading both sides. I read James White's book. Uh, I read uh, Jack Price, or excuse me, uh, his name is James Price. He's from the New King James. He's written a book about the cult of the King James only believers. Mm -hmm. um, I've read D Doug Kutlick, um, quite a few. Of them. On the other side, D.A. Carson, I've read his book. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just prayed about it a lot and started studying and, and looking into it. And I guess the basic question, because truth was such a, an important thing, that's what brought me to the Lord in the first place was, Amen. what is truth? You know, the absolute truth. You know, either Jesus Christ is the only way and there is no other way to get to God or have your sins forgiven, or I have to kind of combine all the religions and they all have a certain amount of truth and... Um, so that was the main issue with me, was what is the truth? And as I began to take this issue seriously, I, you know, does the Bible really mean what it says? Because it says that God cannot lie, that God is truth. And so as I began to examine the Bible versions themselves, and I'd come across things that I knew weren't true, you know, like say the New American Standard, for example, teaches in Psalm 78, verse 36, that the children of Israel deceived God. Now, that's what it says. You know, the King James Bible, even the NIV, this says that they flattered God with their mouths. You know, you can say all kinds of nice things about God and not mean it. And just the fact that it's called flattery, we, flattery, we know that it's not real. But the New American Standard says they deceived him. Now, wait a minute, that's impossible. You can't deceive God. So as I began to see more and more things like this, I just, well, that Bible's not, obviously not completely true. And I just, as I compared, I began to eliminate one after the other, and I was left with one Bible. 
And I looked at the history of how God has used the King James Bible. And it's the only Bible that's out there that people actually believe is the inspired and inerrant Word of God. You know, it's interesting, too. Uh, there have been many uh, studies done uh, on the Bible version issue. And one of the things you see consistently is that amongst people who actually read the Bible, mm -hmm. the King James Bible is by far, I think it's been out, people read more of the King James over the NIV, like five to one. Mm -hmm. You've seen no, Yeah, I've seen me. that. And, it, and these are non-King James only people who are coming out with these studies. Just, yeah, just a survey. Yeah. Right? And yeah, I think it was like 55% compared to 12% that the NIV, something like that. And uh, there have been a couple of studies like that recently and where they're seeing that uh, people who actually read the Bible. I think it was, um, oh, there's one of those. Uh, there's Barna. Barna yeah, Barna, but there's a, there's a major magazine that's out there that came out with a study on this, a worldly magazine. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with Christianity. And they were, they were talking about people who actually read the, the Bible, uh, prefer the King James Bible.